Defense is the best thing. You want to prevent that everybody is a target. They need to practice recovering the data from things that they've stored in the cloud. Hello, and welcome back to Click TV. Here, we talk to businesses and discuss the ways they leverage technology to help with business success. My name is Karin, and my guest today is Ron Gula, president of Gula Tech Adventures, which focuses on cyber technology, cyber policy, and recruiting for more people in the cyber workforce. Hey, Ron, it's great to have you here. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to the question. As am I, and, and I'd love to just get started by hearing a little bit about yourself. So I moved to Maryland in uh, the late 90s. Okay. I was in the Air Force, worked at the NSA. And of course, the Air Force and the National Security Agencies prepares one for a future in venture capital. Right. But along the way, I helped start and I ran Tenable Network Security. Okay. Uh, my wife, Cindy, and I worked there as well. And we actually had a company before that, and now we're doing Google Tech Adventures together. I heard you were recently a guest on USA Today, where you spoke about data care. Can you tell me more about that? Yeah, so USA Today reached out and they were interested in talking about the digital divide, not only with the minorities, but also like rural America who might not have access to think about, you know, careers in cybersecurity and, and whatnot. So a concept that Cindy and I push is called data care. And if you think about the word cybersecurity, if you drop the word security off, off of it, what was the last time anybody said, I'm in cyber, I work in cyber for a business, right? Nobody says that, but when we say cybersecurity, and it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And this kind of creates a lot of barriers for maybe non-white males to get into this, or even just people trying to figure out what a career is. Everybody knows what a lawyer is, a doctor is, an architect and whatnot. So we wanted to be purposeful about reaching out to more people, which is why we came up with data care. Do you have any recommendations on how somebody could get involved with IT or data care? Absolutely. So, you know, first of all, people say, how do I get into cybersecurity? Mm -hmm. And you know, they learn about hacking, they learn about certifications, they learn about offense and defensive technologies, and that's great, but yeah. that kind of excludes what we really need, which is IT people who know to, how to build and secure, you know, IT systems. So. Uh, network design, IT help desk, uh, learning about the theory of, of management of information and protecting okay. data. Today, there's more avenues available to get into all that than ever before. There's community college, there's certification. One of our portfolio companies is Cybrary. They can help people get into those kind of uh, businesses. And you can go to a college and get uh, a lot of different experience with management information systems degrees and other types of uh, IT and cybersecurity degrees. Excellent. Could you tell me more about ransomware and how it's related to phishing? Yeah. So if you go back in the, the 70s and 80s and 90s, you know, IT people were kind of in the basement. They were kind of made fun of, right? And now stereotype. everything we do, <laughs> no matter what business we're in, we have computers and we're connected to the internet. Right. And because of that, all of those computers, regardless of what business you're in, can be targeted with ransomware, where a bad actor can come in and encrypt your computers and your data and literally you know, hold you for that. So de defense is the best thing. You want to prevent this. So user education, making sure you have enough defenses and a decent cybersecurity program. The problem is nobody knows what is the minimum I need to avoid being ransomware. Right. So there's, there's two really interesting breakthroughs that have happened in the fight against ransomware. So one, there's technology out there where you can actually run these on your computers. And, and if it does get encrypted, it'll literally decrypt it for you instantly. Uh, one, of our, one of our portfolio companies called Halcyon does this. And the second thing is if you have backups, everybody says you'll back up your computer. And, you know, it's hard to restore. It, people say it's always backed up, but they never practice restoring. So I always tell people if they want to fight ransomware, they need to practice recovering uh, the data from things that they've stored in the cloud. Absolutely. Having a good disaster recovery plan. Absolutely, but they have to they have to actually do and it. And do it. And test it, yes. So how concerned should people be about nation state cyber attacks or other organized crimes? So I, I hate to be an alarmist, right? But the reality is that when you hear about China and Russia, you know, targeting America, they're they're targeting the Pentagon, they're targeting, you know, government agencies. But they're also targeting the small businesses and the commercial companies that are doing this. Everybody is a target 
because everybody is somebody else's supply chain. Absolutely. And we have this weird societal conversation about cybersecurity because, you know, is it my job to defend my small company right. from the entire might of Putin's, you know, offensive cyber cyber people? When do I do enough? So it's a really interesting, interesting problem. Ron, that's so helpful what you shared. And I, I know something that I hear all the time that makes me cringe is small businesses saying we're too small. It's it's a really difficult problem because I can show you volumes of, of papers and regulations of what people are supposed to do to secure their network. I mean, the NIST cybersecurity framework has five different categories. There's right. the MITRE attack framework and everybody says, oh, I'm too small. The thing is the, the laws of cyberspace apply to them too. Everybody is somebody else's Absolutely. supply chain. Um, you know, for people who are looking for a place to start, the Cyber Readiness Institute says four things. Patch all your systems, your phones, your computers. It says use strong authentication, which could be a strong password. You don't have to change your password if it's strong. Right. Could be two-factor authentication. They say use the USB sticks, the USB devices that you know where they came from. And finally, educate your users that phishing, texting, Absolutely. social media, they can be deceiving and they can be, they could impact your business. So what kind of cybersecurity solutions are you invested in and are any of them based at, uh, based here in Maryland? So we, we try to invest in companies that change the, um, change the dynamic, make it easy to okay. defend your network, make it easy for people to understand where their weaknesses are. So we've invested in a lot of threat intelligence companies so you can give advanced warning of who, who's coming in. Uh, we've invested in cyber training companies uh, so a good example of that that's based here in Maryland is Cyberary. Anybody can go to cyberary.it and they can actually learn for them how what they could learn to become uh, cybersecurity. I want to get them to say data care. But corporations can also go to Cyberary and they can actually develop a training program for their people where they have skills gaps and whatnot. It's so important. Yeah. We have, uh, we have one other company I'd love to talk about called uh, Racktop based here, right here in, uh, in Maryland. They have a secure way to store data, both on premise in your data center or in the cloud. And they can help with that process of recovering from ransomware. Not only can that, they can look at the data being used and alert you to ransomware, mm -hmm. but they can also with a click of the button kind of recover that data and roll that back. It, it's so helpful. And, and having seen the pain that businesses feel once they've been victims, I, I, it's amazing to hear. Um, can you tell me more about Gula Ventures and if you're involved with any nonprofits? So when my wife Cindy and I started Gula Tech Adventures, we were always philanthropic and we didn't put a lot of process around that. And But we really found out that nonprofit investing and mm -hmm. making grants was identical to commercial companies. That really? when you gave somebody some money and some advice, they kind of rose to the next level. So we kind of formulated what we're doing on the nonprofit side with the Gula Tech Foundation. Okay. What we do is we do um, semi-annual uh, million dollar competitive grants that are topic based. So the first one that we did was increasing African-American engagement in cybersecurity. One of the recipients of that was NPower. Well, the NPower organization then went on and got more involvement and grants from the Department of Homeland Security. And their CEO was recently at the White House doing a Zoom with, uh, with this administration talking about how can we increase, increase that. And uh, so we're very proud of that type of engagement. We've done four grants, we're planning many more. It's so impressive and, and so important. So thank you very much. And, and thank you for being here today. It's been such a pleasure having you. Is there anything else you'd like to share? Oh, thanks again for the opportunity. If people want to learn more about our portfolio, mm -hmm. I do a lot of uh, videos and we put things out there. They can visit us at gula.tech okay. or they can watch us on YouTube. If you haven't heard yet, we have launched a new full stack digital marketing agency, Click Digital. We provide a wide range of digital marketing services from digital marketing strategy to website hosting, content creation, video marketing, blogging, SEO optimization, and much more. Click the link below for more details. Thank you for watching Click TV.